happy today. My name is Sophia White. I'm a single mom. I've just got a couple of kids. And today's date, all right, a lot of the standard cribs that a lot of parents have nowadays, when you check out any practice on the posture board, will give you the date when it was made. Many of them now are actually obsolete because they're over 10 years old. The new CSA standards tell us that we have to get rid of these cribs. But because I'm one of these people that like to recycle, I figure, why throw away something that can be reused? You never know what kind of treasures you can get out of it. So today, what I'm going to teach parents is how to try and take a regular standard crib and turn it into a very nice, useful, useful and functional toddler bed. This way you'll save yourself approximately $100 and you'll have something nice for your kids that you can turn and tell them, look, I built this myself. So stick around and watch. Here are just some of the standard tools you will probably need for this project. A good drill bit, safety glasses, and safety is definitely a must. And please wear steel toe boots if you have them. A measuring tape, possibly a hammer from time to time, screws do get stuck. A, gr a good set of uh, new screws to replace any old ones you might need. And some wrenches or pliers or something like this to remove any nuts or bolts, like these ones, which are standardly a half inch, so that you can get the crib apart. Currently, as you can see right now, I do have the rails off, but it's wobbly. When I'm done this project, it'll be a very sturdy toddler bed. Be sure bed. when you're working with your wrench or your vice grips that you place them firmly on your objects that you're trying to remove. And not everyone knows this, but righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. This will help you get off your screws, nuts, or bolts a lot easier. And once you're done this, make sure you save all your materials because guess what? We'll be reusing a lot of these as well. If you don't happen to have washers, make sure you get a few. A lot of them are half inch. As you notice though, you're probably going to see this little run around. It's, it's a piece of plastic that covers your crib end. It also helps the kids when they chew so they don't ruin your bed. But it's very easily removed by putting one nail over on that end, popping your nail on the other side, or even a screwdriver, and just lifting it up. It comes off in one sweet move, a, sweep, a swift movement, and it can be reinstalled or placed back on it later after you paint your project. You'll notice that you may have a number two Phillips, and you'll have to use that to remove all your bits. Other people may have different bits and screws, and this is a number two Robertson. Or you could end up with flathead. Now I'm not fond of these ones because they strip so easily. So when you do go to put your bed back together, please try to stick to the newer standards. The square or the star. They're easier to maintain, they're easier to get into, and if they happen to strip, it's easier to turn and use a hacksaw and make a new head. Okay? Your best bet is to use a multi-tool that will allow you to turn and interchange your tips. Good luck and have fun. Let's take off these pieces now. So first things first, when you do a project like this, remember to turn around and keep safety in mind, okay? i got long hair, so I'm going to put it up. It doesn't look too glamorous, but I have nobody to impress, so I don't care. Make sure you wear some good steel toe boots. And have a pair of glasses, because you don't want anything in your eye. First things first, when you turn around and get ready to cut down your project, you need to get some basic standard sizes. So for instance, the standard size for a crib mattress is approximately 6 inches. Some are smaller, some are bigger. When you go to cut down this product, this is the headboard and the footboard, you want to make sure that you turn around and add that 6 inches to the total height of it, plus 2 inches clearance for underneath. As you can see, this piece that we have here right now is a fairly good piece. It's already got current markings on it. Since we want to make sure that we have at least 8 inches and 2 inches clearance on top of that, we're going to turn and do our mark from here. When you add your 8 and 2, okay, or excuse me, your 6 and your 2, you'll get approximately 8 inches. But if you look at that, that's going to be pretty short for a bed. There's not going to be enough clearance for, say, the side rails. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn and drop this down to approximately 12 inches instead. This way, it gives us enough room for a side rail so your little one doesn't roll over the bed. Okay? So, again, from here, we'll mark one foot, and we'll try and block this off and get ready to notice. Once you mark your board, you're going to have a very faint line. The other one 
is going to be a little bit uh, more difficult to ascertain your size because there's no actual markings on it. So your best bet is just to around lay it right on top of your other one. And as a template, mark your spots, especially if you have a fancy design or anything like this. And this way you'll get a good feel for what you need as a size marker. Once you've got this marked off, you should make it should be fairly fairly easy to uh, go about cutting this piece too. Okay. So once we've uh, got this all marked off, we can continue. And you can see we've done our marks. And before we can do our sides, we've got to figure out exactly where the side boards are going to go. These are the rails to prevent your child from rolling out. We've ascertained that we're going to cut one foot down from the marked line on our product. Some people will be lucky enough to get this. Some won't. But if that happens, go to your flushes area, mark off a line, and make your measurements from that line. With this here in mind, what I've done is because I went and measured a total of six inches for the mattress width, another two inches clearance, that brought it up to eight, but we added another four inches to make it exactly one foot. So what I've done is I've gone to the one foot mark, brought it up to the eight inch mark. That's your four inch clearance for your bed itself. And then the other six inches right here for the mattress. So therefore, your first screw for your sidebar will go here and up another total nine and a half inches because you want to make sure you cover the bed, it's the mattress itself, and a little leeway for the, uh, for the top. Nine and a half inches up, make your other mark, and your second screw should go in there. With the distance between here, being approximately three quarters of an inch, you make sure that you mark it at three quarters of an inch. So your screw will actually go right there. Okay? Again, bring this in three quarters of an inch, and your screw will go right there. Make sure you mark the spots because this is where you're going to have to drill in the near future. Do the same thing to the other side and you'll have rails for both ends. I've got a trusty little helper here. It's my 15-year-old son, Brian James, and uh, he's going to help me out with uh, shoring down some of the products that we're working on. Unfortunately, I don't have a uh, fancy uh, workshop, so I work right out of my living room. I've got a fairly good Black & Decker 13-amp circular saw. This product works really good because it does contain a laser that will help guide you while you do your cuts. You make sure that uh, you hold it steady, try not to jerk, don't push the product, let it push it on its own. It will actually chew through wood and go forward all by itself. Make sure you've got enough clearance, a whole handful usually does the trick between the board and what you're cutting because you don't want to cut your saw horse. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to do is get ready to cut this and uh, continue on with the rest of the project. Close your ears. Ready? Yeah. Nice clean cut. Smells real good. As you know, before we had marked off our spot, which was equal to this. Now we've made the cut of this product, and this is our end board, okay? If you line up the product, like I said prior to today, or earlier, your marks that you made earlier today should pretty much meet up with what you did. The thing is, being that this is the end board and this is the head board, all right, you want to make the headboard just a little bit taller for a set of reasons, obviously. So what we're going to do, we're going to measure down about four more inches. So approximately to where the holes were when your crib was together as one piece. Make sure you mark it all the way across so that when you add your line through, <laughs> You're not making one little piece a little longer than the other. Now, I understand some people will not have uh, wide gapped pieces like this one, but it's still good to turn around and mark through all the way across. This way, you know you're not going to have a wonky bed. And if anybody has a toddler that actually goes to bed without jumping on it, I can hear the choruses of, yeah, right, from a lot of parents right now. But if you do happen to have a child that's not going to jump on their bed, it's not a big deal if you have a wonky little leg once in a while. 
but we're going to be on the safe side. So, four inches across, all the way up. And you'll know you did a pretty good job if you notice that they do almost need flush with the hole on either end. Take your time when cutting. You don't want to lose a limb. As you notice, it's going to flop. To help you keep it balanced, turn your project a little bit. It'll actually give you a better bit of support. Pull back your gauge and start again. Then you know if you cut your piece properly, as it's level, if it can stand up pretty much on its own. As you can see, this one does pretty fine. So it's a level cut. That level cut will help us make sure that the bed doesn't wobble. As we said before, we were going to measure our side rail to be approximately nine and a half inches. When you tear in and go to cut, uh, measure this product, measure from the top part of the dowel, not the piece that holds it on, because you want this one. This part really isn't all that important yet. So on each dowel, mark nine and a half inches. Wow, I got a runaway tape here. Mark your nine and a half inches on each one, and then when you're done, cut each one uh, individually. Make sure you take your time, because you don't want it to be all crooked when you go to put it together. We're going to cut now along each of these strips. You could use your power saw, but the problem is that sometimes it bucks back. So jigsaw is probably your best bet. I'm going to turn this one around and go forward because it's usually easy. Line up your cut. Make sure she's square before you proceed. Yay! We're all done. That's one side. Once you've cut your piece, you're going to notice the ends are pretty messed up. It's not a big deal because later on we're going to make sure the ends are sanded off because the product's going to be painted. You don't want to just leave it plain white. Well, maybe you do. Who knows? If you've had a little one who's chewed on it, spit on it, and God knows what else, this one's 20 years old, you might want to wash it down. If it's second hand, it's always a good idea to do too. But for now, we're just going to work with what we've got right now. Now, and as you can see, with our product, when you got the thing on a headboard, this is going to be, as you can see from the side, the left that keeps your little one in so they don't roll out. Once it's on the posture board, okay, and it's headboard in the back, it's going to be screwed in. But you don't want it all the way to the end because your little one you know is going to jump, climb in and out, and everything else. So what you do is determine where you want to cut this product just so that it holds your little one in and gives them a chance to climb in and out of the bed freely. For us, I think we're going to go to a boat here. You're focusing in on uh, getting your uh, bed set up together, the frame itself, get a 1-8 bit, 
and drill completely through the front. Make sure you use three holes. Because you want to make the product sturdy. And using some long screws, you're going to attach the end. For this project, we're going to be using these types of screws. They're approximately two and a half inches, and they're all-purpose basic screws. Star heads. Remember, when you're doing a project like this, always drill pilot holes. Because if you don't, it's going to make it very difficult to get through the wood. And when it's difficult, it gets frustrating. And you want this project to be fun because, hey, if it's an old crib and you mess up, you can always toss it out. Or try to recycle it some other way. Get it turned into wood chips. But in this end, we're going to try to make sure that the pro uh, project is gets completed and it's usable. We want something that's functional because it saves on our landfill. And now that we've got everything all sorted out and all together, the beds all put together, using the side rail, the second one, we've matched it on to the one by one boards that I had uh, purchased separately. This here is just to short up so it's not so wobbly. Now that that's all set and done, you place in, lean it up against the wall. Your loved ones going to be safe enough, they won't roll up, and you've got yourself a bed. You've just saved yourself over $100. So, I hope you guys enjoyed what I did, and just remember, you never know what kind of treasures you're going to get. It just takes a little bit of imagination. Have a good day. Today, my name is Sylvia White. I'm a single mom, and I've got a couple of kids. And today's date, all right, a lot of the standard cribs that a lot of parents have nowadays, when you check out any practice on the posture board, will give you the date when it was made. Many of them now are actually obsolete because they're over 10 years old. The new CSA standards tell us that we have to get rid of these cribs. But because I'm one of these people that like to recycle, I figure. Why throw away something that can be reused? You never know what kind of treasures you can get out of it. So today, what I'm going to teach parents is how to try and take a regular standard crib and turn it into a very nice, useful, useful and functional toddler bed. This way you'll save yourself approximately $100 and you'll have something nice for your kids that you can turn and tell them, look, I built this myself. So stick around and watch. Here are just some of the standard tools you will probably need for this project. A good drill bit, safety glasses, and safety is definitely a must. And please wear steel toe boots if you have them. A measuring tape, possibly a hammer from time to time, screws do get stuck. A, gr a good set of uh, new screws to replace any old ones you might need. And some wrenches or pliers or something like this to remove any nuts or bolts like these ones, which are standardly a half inch, so that you can get the crib apart. Currently, as you can see right now, I do have the rails off. 